Hello my friends, welcome to reddit rabbit. Before we start, catch the rabbit at the bottom right corner, smash that subscribe button and leave a comment. r slash ask reddit, what's a little thing you do to make the world a better place? Pick up trash. Donate blood products. Your body's constantly making red blood cells and platelets, and it's harmless, and possibly healthy, to donate. I started with whole blood, because, well, that's what donating blood means to people. 15 minutes of time, eat a cookie, get a sticker. After I did that for a few gallons I was asked if I'd consider donating platelets. They have to be used within 5 days of collection so there's always a constant need, but it takes about 2 hours to do it. A single pint of blood doesn't have enough for a platelet transfusion. So the donor ends up hooked to an apheresis machine that'll centrifuge the blood, remove the platelets, and return the rest of the blood back to the body. So I end up watching Netflix for 2 hours on Saturday while doing another triple donation, every other week, up to 24 times a year. It's like Spider-Man's quote in Civil War. When you can do the things I can, but you don't, and then the bad things happen. They happen because of you. Obviously donating like this isn't saving the world, but it's making the world a better place, and I'd feel ashamed if I just spend that time watching Netflix at home, instead of doing some good at the same time. I also donated bone marrow in 2008, so that was a little more of a if you can help and don't, and bad things happen, it's your fault situation, as I was the best available match in the entire world for my recipient. That was a little thing to me, but a life changing thing for that person's family. I always make sure to be overly polite to people serving me, whether in a restaurant or a shop and I always tell them to have a good day when I leave. Having worked in retail I know a simple how are you, thank you or a have a nice day can mean a lot, especially on a bad shift. I was raised to have good manners and I'll be damned if I don't flex them at any opportunity I have. It always surprises saddens me that other people can't be the same way. Own up to my mistakes to those it's directly affects. Take care of my things. We didn't have much while growing up and my mother always believed in quality. She would buy things she knew we would use a lot. I have the same pencil case from 6th grade. I'm in grad school now. I have linen bed sheets, water bottles, fountain pens, mugs, and even some clothes that I've used for over 10 years. This helps me consume less, in turn creating less waste. I feel like we should strive to reduce, before reusing and recycling. It blows my mind how some people go through so much crap, because they see it as disposable or it's out of fashion. I've had the same backpack since 2007, the same duffel bag since 2004, and the same laundry hamper basket since 2000. I also use the hamper laundry basket to put my groceries in when I go to the store so I'm not using bags, either. I'm also in grad school and I've got 10 plus year old binders and the same ruler I've had since middle school. My dad hammered it into me that you take care of your stuff. It was annoying when I was younger, but once I started paying for all my own stuff I was so glad he was like that. I have the same backpack since 1990. I have shoes and boots that are older than a lot of redditors. I buy most of my things from thrift shops and I take good care of them. My parents thought me well. They have the same toaster since 1963. I'm 16 so my stuff isn't that old especially, because I just stopped growing. But my pillowcases and blanket were my dad's when he was my age and they're the best. Original 1979 The Empire Strikes Back cases and blanket. When someone gets cut off repeatedly in conversation I make an effort to make eye contact with them and say go ahead. I'm listening or something along those lines. Yes. I do this too. And you can tell by the look on their face that it's really appreciated. Everyone knows how it feels to have a story cut off. Especially if it happens more than once. Good on you. As someone who is constantly interrupted when speaking by her closest family members. I appreciate you. There's not many people who even consider this as an option. Not being listened to sucks. When I remove an item from a grocery store shelf, I move the same item forward to replace it. Esp top shelf items. Short people like me appreciate you. 
I am a tall person with severe nerve damage in my back. At your next short person's meeting can you discuss doing this on the lower shelves? Thank you in advance. That's kind of a tall order, don't you think? I do this, too. Not so much to help people reach them, but more to just face off the shelf since I worked in retail so much. It takes an extra second and helps the store look tidy. If everyone did it, well, I guess we might start costing people jobs. I say thank you, sincerely. Simple, but effective. My husband always says you're welcome whenever anyone thanks him for anything. You wouldn't believe how often we skip it until you hear him. He holds a door open and someone mutters thanks. He says you're welcome. He hands me a dish I'm reaching for and I just thanks. And he says you're welcome. Always does. No matter how small or inconsequential. Slight clarification. He never says no problem or anything else. I don't know if I buy it, but I did hear once that no problem has an unspoken connotation that it, the action, could have been a problem. I personally do like my pleasure, and I use all of these. My husband, though, only says you're welcome. Try it for every little thing, you'll be noticed, and no, it doesn't come across as insincere or overly formal, he definitely is not that. LOL. Recognize and thank a person for their help efforts, no matter how small a task may seem. I found this really helpful as a bar manager at festivals. When you have crazy 14 hour shifts just telling people hey man, thanks for restocking the fridge, really goes a long way, purple heart. I always go on the side of the sidewalk closest to the cars when I see an elderly person or someone with a baby. I doubt anything changes really. But I like to think I'm being selfless. As someone frequently with a baby, I will notice and appreciate this. I pick up a few pieces of trash each time I walk my dog. It's a very tiny thing, but I like to think it adds up. I often hike ski mountains and you wouldn't believe how many beer cans, sunglasses, nip bottles, junk etc that you find under chairlifts. It's all over the mountain, but I usually hike under the chairlift to collect. Makes me feel good. Nature is beautiful and precious and people are dongs to it. I take a trash bag kayaking. Looks like a lot of it is accidental loss. Hardly ever seen anyone just chunk trash on the ground. Not like the 70s anyway. The more humans, the more trash makes its way loose. Found my own trash on the side of the road in the neighborhood. Oops blew away and didn't see it. Oops fell out the trash truck. Whatever. Pick up more than you lose and we're all good. Really, it's a can't lose scenario. You the real MVP. I don't know if it makes the world a better place, but I try to be as nice as possible to people. Even strangers who come up and talk to me, I'm nice to them. I don't know what they're going through, but sometimes we just need someone to talk to. Yes, whenever I have an exchange with a retail or service worker I try to really look at them and invest a little in the exchange. People can tell when you treat them like a person, instead of an automaton. I know men don't care and just want to be done with their shift, but that's the point. And some really seem to come alive if they realize you're treating them like someone who deserves notice. Move turtles out of the road smiley face. Yay. When you move them, make sure you put them in the direction they were going. They are quite determined to go where they want to go. Of course. I move them far enough away from the road, in the direction they're going, pick up closer to their rears, and I hold them close to the ground in case they decide to fight me and I flinch. Wait for people that get left behind. No bro left behind. I used to get left behind at family lunches and dinners, as I am a slow eater. An uncle of mine started staying with me till I finished my food. Probably cost him some time, but meant a lot for me. Use manners. Sounds inconsequential, but after working hospital or tea retail the amount of people that don't use them is terrible. Related. Treat the person answering the phone as a person, recognizing that they're probably paid peanuts to be ranted at by customers who expect them to be magicians. Also experience taught. I leave spare quarters in gumball machines. I like to think it makes somebody happy every once in a while. That's really great. When I was little I found a quarter already in the gumball machine. It was you. You're welcome. 
I do my best to keep bread and toast crumbs out of the butter container. Truly the kindest of all of us. I just take the whole stick of butter and rub it on the toast corn like a giant magic marker. Compliment people. I saw on here that men don't get many compliments so I try to do it in as unflirty a way as possible so it doesn't get awkward. Simple stuff like cool shirt. When I worked at Starbucks, I tried to say one compliment to each customer that went through the drive through It could be something as simple as, nice sunglasses or watch or whatever. It could literally be anything and it totally switched people's attitude toward you. I told other partners, other employees, to do this and it somehow made some shifts a lot easier to manage, customer wise. I still try to do this at work, but it's a little harder now with the social distancing and masks. Esmeralda voice by the way, great mask.